I'm selling my canopy camper. Hey, you can find me on the back roads. Windows there, radio blaring, blowing smoke out the ceiling on the back roads. Ain't no other feeling. Headed to a balance, about to pick me up some women on the back roads. Jacked up suspicion, mud ties big, drop the boat, let's go fishing on the back roads. Country boy living, sugar cane fields, make a living on some trees. So we've had this canopy camper for three years. Uh, we're selling it for just over $15,000. It's going to a great friend of ours, a um, big fan of Mountain State Everland. I think he's gonna have a lot of fun with it. So I'm gonna show you what's left to jack this thing up and get it removed from the Tacoma so it's ready for tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all of these Allen head bolts. And instead of removing this lower bracket off, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull these these bolts out of here so it doesn't get hung up on that as we lift this thing up. Where these brackets go that actually held the canopy camper, they're attached at the back, the front, and then one in the middle. This camera bracket, I gotta get a small wrench in there, drop that one bolt down, and this piece should just fall right out. So what I'm gonna do is gonna lift each side a few turns, going catty corner, right? But because I didn't use Cicaflex and I just used Butyl, it should come up a lot easier. Cicaflex is basically glue, so when you're trying to seal stuff in with Cicaflex, just be aware that it's gonna be a chore to get it off your truck. You can feel it in the turn of this, whether or not you have tension on it. And since we did that front corner, we did that corner over here, like it's spinning pretty, pretty freely over here. But I'm trying to preserve as much of that as possible. It's starting to separate and I can hear it kind of popping and creaking. And as you can see here, it's starting to lift up a little bit. Stick a putty knife in there and work my way down here. Good morning, we got the camper off last night and um, New owners here, right? Check out this sweet Tacoma um, on Kings. He's ready to go. Two brothers, actually. They've been to Venture X Fest several times. And uh, I'm going to keep them busy with pulling off all the butyl that's stuck to the bottom of the camper. They're doing that right now. They're going to be occupied with that for a little while. And uh, I'm going to go upstairs and do some work and uh, check back in. But we are going to get this camper loaded on this truck before the day's over. All right, so I stepped in for just a few minutes. I came back out and they've already got the camper on the truck. We sealed the whole front, both sides where the bed caps are, and then a back, the back around the taillights. Okay. Yeah, it's looking really good. I'm kind of jealous because they put so much attention to detail in installing this in here. Yeah, the camper worked great the way that we had it installed and it's going on to its new home now. So let's get this build wrapped up. All right, we're cruising along pretty good here. Um, just kind of addressing some of the finer details, putting the steps back on. We had to take the steps off to actually use the jacks, which was not a big deal. Working inside, putting the brackets on right now. We're putting one in the middle on the back and towards the front. The molly panels are going on the back or have gone on the back. Doing a little bit of cleaning in here, polishing everything up before it gets muddy for the first time. And uh, yeah, cruising right along. We'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Let's pull this thing out of the garage. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my god, that was close. Well, what do you think? I'm excited. It's yeah. awesome. What's the first thing you're going to do in this? Actually, don't tell me. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, <laughs> I'd be lying if I, I didn't think he was probably going to drink a bunch of beer in it. Yeah. Probably cross thread some bolts, you know? Yeah. It's all right, though. It's hell on drinking beer. It wasn't bad. It was pretty quick. Everything went smooth, which is good. The jacks definitely helped. Besides dealing with them, it was great. If you were to do it again, what would you do differently? Uh, drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> good answer, good answer, and drink beer. In fact, that's what we're gonna go do right now. We're going to Greenbrier Valley Brewing Company. And next time you see us, we'll be putting a mod cap canopy camper on the back of my Tacoma. We 
just got back from Iceland. We spent two weeks in Iceland. My family and a close family, friends of ours and their kids, it just had an absolute blast. But we've gone from average, you know, 50 degree days to I'm heading up to Tokyo four wheel drive and GP Factor right now. It's like, it's like 90 degrees outside right now. It's actually 93. But we've spent the last like four months without a camper, guiding trips. I'm, I'm really excited about having spent that time kind of dialing things back to the bare necessities because I've just been living out of front runner boxes and you know waterproof duffels and stuff like that. So it's gonna be real fun building out this new camper and only putting the things in there that I really feel like are important. After the camper is put together, we're gonna be driving it all the way out to Colorado to Grand Junction to see Brian at Goose Gear and put a new set of cabinets in the back of this mod cap camper. So it's gonna be a whirlwind of the next 30 days, but we're gonna get this thing built and we're gonna be living out in no time. swimming last night uh, camera wasn't really necessary you don't need to see a bunch of middle-aged dudes with their tops off but I, no more as I could just pull in the parking lot AJ's already got the tailgate off we've got a bunch of stuff in the shop and that's where we're gonna be spending the majority of the time today it is probably gonna be like 95 degrees and like it feels like 85% humidity so it's gonna be really nice to be in the showroom and getting things worked out yeah we thought we'd try something a little bit different here inspired definitely by some uh, vehicle builds that we've seen on YouTube and it's I think it's gonna help us keep a little more organized with what we got to do because we're gonna to try to turn this out really quick. I don't know what they're laughing about over there, but oh, that's that's my Toyo <laughs> love there. Um, speaking of which, let's go back and see if we can find the tires and see how they're going. Okay, we've got the RT trails here from Toyo stacked up. Um, they're in queue to get mounted on our rims. Uh, we're staying with the Nomad wheels. We've got the convoys on the truck. Um, these RT trails are something else, right? So it's more of a rugged trail rugged terrain type tire as opposed to being a mud tire but you can tell that they are some pretty substantial lugs this is a 10 ply tire as well um, this tread pattern is going to make it a little bit smoother on the road and it kind of eliminates some of that noise and honestly after having my mts on the truck i don't even know where they're at right now but honestly after having the mts on the truck they haven't really been too noisy and i've got around 30,000 miles out of them but I think we're gonna get some good life out of these. These are the 285, 75 R17, but these Toyo Open Country RT trails are gonna look sick on the Tacoma. So these are the GP solar panel mounts. What we're gonna do is drill through each um, side here in two different places. Um, it basically gets like a rubber isolator, carriage bolt, um, lock nut and washer, and then this plate, and then this will rest on top of the load bars on the mod cap. Four bolts for each track, a lock nuts with a washer on here. We're gonna pre-center this so that it'll be ready to just put on the mod cap. This is the tent that's gonna go on top of it. We're gonna remove the packaging and go ahead and start pre-wiring and putting some of the stuff on top of the tent. It looks like AJ's got uh, the load bar feet mounted and pre-prepped here on the tent. We're gonna actually be using um, this red arc wiring kit right to take it from the solar connectors down to anderson and then anderson is actually going to plug in on top of the tent this fabric tape's really good you see a lot of this on like vehicles like underneath the hood and it's just it's almost like an oem style like like tape that works really well for finishing off looms and it's clean it's durable and uh keeps your shrink your uh, your loom from fraying so would you say two and a half two and a half 
install load bars and solar and Ryan's not here yet so we're just gonna score that one for AJ all right so this is how the propane mount comes it obviously come wrapped you got your hardware kit with your latches and your spacers and propane's gonna come like this so we're gonna put following the instructions we're gonna put the latches on based upon the tank that Jason's using while AJ works on the propane mount I've already opened the tent here is the drop down tent table installed in the IUCAD 3R rooftop tent, right? If you wanna do a little bit of work in your tent at night or set up an iPad, um, or if the weather is really crappy and you wanna sit up top and have a bowl of cereal in the morning or something like that, you can do that with this IUCAD drop table. How are you, man? We're already done. Oh my gosh, good. I can go home and start drinking some beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drilling some holes. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna put the rivet in the number two hole. Line it up, great. Right. We got a whole bunch of stuff going on right now. I'm trying to put the drop down table in the top of the tent. AJ's already assembled, virtually assembled the back door. We've got the drop down table that we showed you yesterday. These are the molly panels and they're actually cut out for the tire you know, that we're gonna be putting on. Yeah, yeah. You gonna hop in? They're spun on here and now we're balancing. So a good thing here at OK is that they don't stop short of just doing exactly what you need done. They go a little bit further um, and check these upper control arm ball joints are bad. So they replaced them. The new SPC upper control arm ball joints are not greasable. They're sealed. So um, we'll hopefully get a little bit better life out of those, but tires are just about all mounted up and he's balancing the last right now. All right, looking good on this end. We're going to go back and start working on the mod cap. Um, we'll put the spare tire in the back because it's going to go on the outside of the camper this time. Thanks, bud. So we have the whole rear door built, which AJ did. So we're going to cross out the- Definitely did the table, table. not the latch kit yet. We didn't do the, the latch molly. kit, but we did do the molly plate. Um, so we'll do the spare tire once we have it mounted on the truck. And we'll also do the latch kit on the spare tire once we're done with it. A lot of the mod cap prep here, right? Looks like AJ's working on the fireplace. Water tank is probably gonna be an easy one to knock out here today. Yep. I am assembling the legs to prop this canopy camper up in the air so we can place it on the back of Jason's Tacoma. So Ryan is putting on the jack stands for a little bit later. AJ is installing um, the kit or the brackets to hold on the Dickinson fireplace. A lot of the pre-work has been done on the fireplace. It's gonna save us an upwards of, you know, four or five hours actually, including the bell housing on top, routing all this and putting it together. It was just easier to get some of the early fab work done like on the fireplace kit and the chimney, the chimney topper. Just get all that done ahead of time. Just saves us about five, six hours of fab work here. So we can focus on just installing that on the actual camper. All right, AJ is moving right along with the fireplace. He's done a really nice job of dressing that edge up. We're gonna put the fireplace on. I think we're gonna finish up the water tank. That's at least the plan. And then we're gonna take a lunch break. But we are absolutely crushing out the projects here today to pick four wheel drive. Moving right along. Oh yeah. Oh, I just plugged up the, uh, this Alucab water tank comes so you can set it up in a bunch of different directions if you wanna have it mounted different ways. But they've got holes on both bottom inside and out. And we had to plug up the inside hole so that when Jason fills it up, it's not filling the back of his camper full of water. Yeah. It's looking pretty good here, Tim. I think we're about ready to cross off a line item for you. Maybe. I think we are. The finishing touch here, AJ and Ren have been working on. Normally they put these 
plastic uh, bolt covers on from the outside, but if we thought we'd just drill these out a little bit and planned a little bit ahead, we could put them on from the inside and push up against them. They're never coming out. There's actually a lip behind there. So it gives it a really nice appearance. If you didn't want to put the molly panel on here, it would dress up really nice and look really nice on the back of the truck. We are back from Chipotle. It's hot out. Oh, it's, yeah, gross hot, like really hot. It's really hot, yeah. So we're gonna get finish getting the fireplace installed, uh, get it sealed, get the outside chimney on, get the red arc panel mounted. This is done, and then once those things are done, I think we can work on getting the seals on top of this and start working on some of the prep work for the top of this to put the tent on top. Up the, top. the tires are mounted. Let's cross that off the list. We have just finished IU cab drop table install. Maybe we're just about due to put the tent top. So the tent filler is, is this rubber gasket that goes all the way around and it's color coded. So the instructions explain how it needs to lay in there, but everything is notched and grooved here pretty well. And you helped Eric with his last build, right? As far as the Sika underneath or on top, what did you guys do there? Well, we did like a double layer. So we first put on a bead of Sika Flex on here and then Rin kind of smoothed it out. We laid this into it and then we put another bead of Sika Flex on before we set the cap top on it. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and lay out the hardware, uh, me and Fitz are, and get ready for some Sika Flex. We did recruit Scott Brady for this build here. So he's helping actually getting everything to nicely line up, then Sika, and then tightening all the bolts down, right? That's going to be pretty monotonous. Take so just put your hand strong, on, huh? on my hands. Hi, oh, hi kids. Hands You'll come downstairs. I got some bicycle pops. <laughs> Take my strong hand. Take, Take my strong hand, boys. You're such strong. Hey, want some mashed potatoes? <laughs> my germs. <laughs> So we are going to punch these holes out because of the new mod cap. It has the same tent, it just mounts to the different size bottom pillar. So you can do a five foot, five and a half, six and six and a half foot, and you can just punch out these holes uh, according to the size that you need and then you can go and drop in a filler plate here and then that will cover up this bottom tent section that you cannot use in your vehicle. I'll have to get those pieces out from the inside then. Mm -hmm. I need to put, if somebody pushes on the top, that should be good. Video update, and it's raining. Thank God. I don't think it probably feels any different outside. It feels a little cooler, but it's just a really heavy humidity here in Steersville, New Jersey today. It's been kind of interesting to see all this come together. You can see the rubber gasket through here. Washering and nutting the millions of bolts that go around this thing. Keep a good even seal on it. There's a Velcro filler, canvas filler that goes across all of this. I'm excited about all of these connections. They're really nice. Um, we've got USB-C over here and USB. Looks like some new reading lights. Up front, this is the tent filler plate right here. And Ryan is using the Milwaukee cordless rivet tool to rivet each of these in. And then we're gonna seek a, the seam from the backside from the outside. I think we did pretty good today. I think we got a lot of stuff done. Um, there's definitely still some things on the sheet. Um, but I think it's time for a beer and time to relax. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, had a great night last night. Uh, went over and swam at gyms again. I think the heat index expected for today is 105 degrees. So we're gonna try to get this bed prepped as soon as possible so we can get it in 
outside the uh, comforts of an air-conditioned shop. Ryan is working on the fit kit this morning. So what we'll be doing is putting in the filler plates um, over here. And then um, there's a filler plate and with you know, some drain cutouts that's gonna go down here along the edge. And then we've got these brackets here that will dress up and hold and support uh, the top of the overhang of the canopy camper. But specifically what I'm working on is trying to waterproof um, under the bed caps. Last time I put a canopy camper on here, we did not do that. So I did get some water intrusion from the sides here. So now that we've had so many of these canopy campers installed, typically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a bead of Sika all the way down on the inside edge and then try to hold close um, to the outside edge as, as close as we can to these cutouts that are that are on here, right? Because what we don't want to happen is we don't want to get Sika to come off on the paint. Over here along this front edge too, we'll run a bead of Sika um, that we'll be putting that kind of, that cap on. Um, and then there's a significant gap here that's almost the size or width of a finger or even two fingers. We'll be filling that with butyl. So that should waterproof the bed pretty good. You don't want to cap off these drain plugs i don't think in the bottom of the bed because if you do get any water in there it needs some way to escape aj's working on wiring um i did do one modification to the truck from what we had before i put a anderson panel plug in the side of the truck you can see the two holes that we had existing we'll probably just um fill those in with uh, butyl as well just to kind of keep it more watertight but uh yeah aj's going to be working on electric here today we're gonna be mounting a DCS battery, slimline battery up here up front. Yeah, we're trying to get things done as quick as we can so we can get this truck in the comforts of the air conditioning because uh, it's gonna get really hot later. Uh, we're getting your shunt mounted to the back of the bed. Uh, this is a plate that we make that holds the shunt and then the fuse that runs from your auxiliary battery uh, to your red arc board. So we mount this back. You might have to have this as close to your auxiliary battery. So your battery is gonna be mounted right here. So this plate normally can sit on top of the battery, but we also found that we can mount it to the back of the bed with some rib nuts and it's easy location just to put it. So we're just getting it mounted up right now. There's a little bit of an overhang here for the filler plate for the Alucab uh, mod cap. And it's gonna give us about three inches of depth here. And uh, with the goose gear, there's gonna be a bulkhead. So you could access and service the battery as needed. Um, but this is all gonna essentially be covered up after we put uh, the goose gear in. I am just about done with the butyl and the Cicaplex here. I'm about ready to cross that one off. AJ has run power and battery table slide, awning, and shower cube. That's gonna go on after we get the camper loaded, I believe. But looking good, and I think we're expecting Rick from Blue Ridge Everything here to be showing up here pretty soon. When you install a water tank, what you wanna make sure you do is tighten the air nozzle. If not, you will be fishing it out from down the bottom like I just did. So I'm gonna put this back in. Hopefully I won't drop it again. Yeah, this dresses up pretty nice here. This is the new version of the vent. The last one was kind of a large box, um, but this will be really nice here. Tim's done a good job of tucking that through. This is all looking pretty good. Good work. We are currently putting some Sika Flex around these bolt holes so that when we mount the shadow awning brackets on here, it'll seal up and the cab won't leak. That is one hell of a cock job. Look at that. I mean, you don't even need to paint that with your finger. That was just one smooth strip there. Whew, it is hot. Awning bracket is on and sealed. We go out here and check on Tim. Tim is working on the back part, the, the door and assembly for the fit kit um, off the back. And here's Mr. Uh, Rick Stowe. He's come to join us. He's actually, uh, he's uh, helping AJ take the tent off of his Grenadier. He's gonna be putting that on your Explorer camp. Right? Yep, right? yeah, yeah, working on it right now. Big day here, gonna have to try to find a place to swim tonight, I think. Um, that's kind of been in a, uh, the story of the week for sure. We just fun finished bolting up the table slide on the underside of the Alucab tent, and we are mounting the table and testing fitment, which everything fits really nicely. 
One more thing, checked off the list. I thought that good was job, Tim. Tim. Yeah, good, good job. job, Tim. I'm Tim today, hi. <laughs> well, we've got the awning brackets on at least, but we're gonna wait till we get the truck seated and the cab seated before we install that, as well as the shower cube, because it kind of needs to be in place on the truck to do it. We're ready to bring that truck in here. And at that point, it's a matter of dropping it on the truck and then our last little bit of like, just closing her up and sealing it up. All right, well, I'm just tightening the back of the fit kit here, and then I'll go Suck all these down, tighten it down to the bed, go underneath, and then we'll be ready to drop the camper on. Uh, keep coming. Good there. All right, we are putting the camper on the truck. This is a pretty exciting moment. We've waited a while for this. We're lining up some of the bolts in the fit kit right now. We've got all of the butyl installed. John's in there. We've got to be careful we don't forget about him. It's time to mark off some items off of a chart. Butyl has been installed. Great work, Jason. You did a really strong job there. They're working on the fit kit and we're working on the rear door right now. Yeah, let's take the stands off and put the molly panels on right now. So I told you he was sleeping and he's drinking Starbucks. That's actually AJ's from yesterday. It's really cold. <laughs> yeah, no, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> All right, so I've known Rick for a long time. And what we're going to do is we've got an assortment of Blue Ridge Dribbling gear bags that we're going to put on this back door of the mod cap. So, Rick, let's see what we got and walk through it a little bit. Yeah. It looks like we have a few different things, right? This is the, the regular size tire storage bag. Now, you have an XL size bag too, right? Yeah, so this is definitely like way flatter. And, you know, for folks that may not want like this huge bag hanging off the back of their rig, and it's also a great application for like molly panels because it's a little bit skinnier. A lot of people use these on the Alley Cab campers, like to one side of the door. It's a great way to kind of keep your trash, you know, right outside of the camper, but easy access. A cook kit here, and we've yeah. got a three different size uh, pouches. So this is a new model, right? Yeah, so we updated the front of this guy uh, for the laser cut Molly, uh, and we're using red as a liner. So if you've got like a gadget bag or something like that, you can just look at this, even if you don't have an ID panel and know what it is. And then it also gives you some daisy chain on the front. Interior essentially the same. You got room for some pouches up here for your spices, your utensils, your cooking stuff can go in these sleeves in the back. But then one of the bigger updates is we noticed that a lot of fridges now have handles that are a lot lower. So used to you just had two loops at the very top edge. Well now you've got these mid loops, but if you want to mount it on a fridge where the handle's at the top, you just take that slack through there. Okay. Also works great for molly panels. These are just our triple run GP pouches. This is a small, a medium, and a large. I brought kind of an assortment of all three sizes just to see what works with this molly panel. Uh, because on the back, you've got kind of different configurations of Molly where this would be like three columns wide and two rows. This one's two columns and three rows. And then the large is like five columns wide. All right, well, let's get some mounted up here and see what it looks like. Yeah. Campers have got these really cool Molly panels here. And not only that, but you've got these holes. So you can use like stainless eyelets and adjust it to kind of hang down. Make sure you avoid the stove pipe because this is vinyl. But uh, just a little bit of space, you should be good to go. And then you got easy access to your trash and with the eyelets, you can pop it off, you know, dump that out, sort your recycling, whatever you need to do, and then put it back on the truck. There'll be a handle here, but that'll be fine because it kind of, it'll just lay, like lay off the handle. So yeah, yeah, let's pop that one right there. These are nicer uh, Molly panels than the first generation of the GP stuff. They almost have kind of a rounded rounded edge to them. So with Molly, you don't have to go through every single yeah. loop every single time, right? So no, for sure. And especially if it's something like this where it's gonna get up there and stay, um, you know, this is maybe I'm a bit of a perfection with this. You can kind of just like measure out how many of these sections you need and then pop it back out. What this does is kind of takes up tension and uh, that way make sure you don't have any slop. So like once you click it in, it won't slide down. There you go. There's the snap. Yeah, I just couldn't get it to there, so yeah. All right, so now we have the cook kit installed and we've got these three different size yeah, the GPs. Uh, Jeep general pouches, right? Yeah, so we're going to go with two smalls here. Yep. We, these are nice because you're not kind of like, you know, tempted to load them down. We can stack two here and then the big guy, which will fit like a laptop, a tablet, or you can put rain jackets in here is kind of perfectly sized for this panel. That's, that's perfect. Yeah. Actually, that works really well with spacing. There's really a bunch of different options that yeah. how you want to configure it. If you don't feel like you need your cook kit here all the time, which I always am reaching in, pulling out my cook kit yeah. when I get there uh, for lunch to cut a block of cheese or yeah. something like that. So it's really nice to have it hanging there where I need it. There we go. 
Yeah. Oh, wow, that does fit really well in this new panel on the mod cap. So. Oh, yeah, I would, I would go through just like one more, but if you just take up some slack on one of your cross uh, bars, you'll be good to go. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. Rick, thanks so much. Anytime. Yeah. And uh, let's walk around and show you a little bit of OK four wheel drive. Sounds good. I'm putting up four stainless um, eye bolts here to hang the Blue Ridge Overland gear tire storage bag. And Alex is helping me work on some finishing touches for butyl and sealing up the back of the truck. We sealed up a lot of the truck already, but this is the final touch here. So we're gonna knock this out and uh, see where it takes us. All right, I got my keys to my camper. Tim, thanks so much for helping yes, me put this together. Absolutely. Camper looks great. I'm heading to GP Factor. Uh, nice. Visit with AJ and Ren a little bit longer and then hit the road. See you later. Have a good one. Okay, I am back in West Virginia and I've been busting tail all day and it looks like I have done absolutely nothing. I routed some wires uh, today, which was pretty not exciting, right? <laughs> just, just things that needed to be done. I really need to work on the water because we got a guy at a trip coming up this weekend. But right now I'm gonna put the can crusher on. All right, pretty easy because I save all of my bolts from all of the projects that I work on. So I've got a million stainless hex head and uh, Allen button head bolts, but we're just gonna drill a hole in dead center here. I can hang the can crusher off of the top bolt um, and then tighten it here. And it's actually concealed pretty good right here. Um, it's sticking out much less than the awning is. And uh, I think I'm gonna be pretty happy with crushing cans right here. Okay, once I found the right bolts, it was an easy fix. All right, it is another evening here at home in West Virginia. And I've just been kind of fighting a couple gremlins here um, and trying to figure out what to do about my electrical, but I've got everything working now. Um, when we installed this, one thing we did miss was actually grounding out the solar panel and you have to ground out the solar panel in order to get it to function. So um, you can see here on the panel, we do have solar activity, right? 13 watts, the sun's about to set. So it's not really creating a whole lot. So one thing that's a little bit different with the mod cap is these rails are not as thick as they used to be or as wide as they used to be. On the last camper I had, on the canopy camper, um, this rail was big enough to fit the base for this. So I had a fan hanging here um, and a fan hanging here. Then I brought the wire up through and tracked it along. Well, I can't do that this build. So what I decided also that I wanted to do and was a priority is to get this, get this fan up so it's a little bit higher on me. The only downside I have the fan down low, even when I turned it up and angled it, it was kind of blowing over top of me, right? And I don't want that, especially on these last few hot days that we've had. It'd be nice if the fan was almost like blowing directly at your face or down on you. And I'm not going to attempt to run wire through all this stuff here. So um, I found a really good spot to mount this. Um, it clears the strut perfectly with about a half inch or three quarters of an inch, right? And so in transportation, um, it'll just hang. So this is gonna be real nice. Now I'm gonna do the other one on the other side. And be careful punching through the other side. Once you feel it kind of starting to press against the fabric, just go easy or even turn the drill and reverse to press through and melt the fabric. The instructions actually call for mounting in six locations. That is way overkill based on how I used the fans last time and we're pretty rough on our trucks. Yeah, so if you're looking to see what kind of fan I have, they, they are not the cheapest, but they are extremely durable. They pump out a lot of air. They position just about anywhere. It's got a three year warranty um, and we put them to work on the last build. Okay, I got both fans up. I think I'm gonna run the wire straight down and run the wiring through here and then down into the back and plugged up right here. All right, we're back in the driveway here in West Virginia and it's actually not a bad night. What I'm working on here today is the drilling out for the water line. So um, I've already drilled the outside panel. I actually drilled 
13 16 on this side to give it a nice smooth um, edge. I drilled almost all the way through the step up bit and then I came through on the other side at 13 16 and it created a nice smooth edge. So I'm going to size up first, put this thing on there. Um, here is the tap that's going to go out on the outside for water. I may actually plug this for now and uh, try to work on the fridge. So I got to get the fridge installed for a guided trip that we actually have tomorrow. So yeah, this is going to go through the outside. Um, and then I'm going to fasten on the back of the plate with this um, female um, barbed coupler. Doesn't that look good? Look at that. That looks awesome. I thought I was just going to do the water, but after looking at how all this comes together, I just want to kind of be done with the project. I've just kind of evenly spaced them out um, so they look nice. I'm going to mark the holes and drill. Two inch hole saw for the NOCO. And then I've cut up to, so seven eighths. So I cut another seven eighths inch hole right here. This is where the propane line is going to be. This is where the NOCO is going to be. Now I think what I'm going to do is actually kind of angle that off to the side. This is going to be behind the plate. I don't want the hose coming straight down to the water hose. I want it offset just a little bit. Now that the LP quick connect is attached, I'm going to put the NOCO on. Not too shabby, right? Everything looks pretty straight. I guess we'll see in the morning what it looks like because it's dark right now. If you buy hardware, don't discard it. If you have extra hardware, keep it because this little gasket I keep in a peanut butter jar with a bunch of rubber gaskets that I already have. And it just so happens to fit perfectly. I did not go buy this for this project. Sweaty. I was bragging about how it was cooler out here earlier. All right, so if you can see it, which I think you can, NOCO, LP, water. We're good to go. It is hot in Grand Junction and we're at Goose Gear. Let me show you what we're doing. We're putting the new V3 system from Goose Gear in the back of the Tacoma and we've got the whole team here. We are in sunny Grand Junction, Colorado at the new Goose Gear shop. They've moved here from California and we've got the Tacoma here after 10 years of working together with Goose Gear. We're finally in a position that we could be out here, meet them in Grand Junction. But let's get you inside and show you around the shop first and then we're going to do an install in the back of the Tacoma. Hey man, what's up? How's it going? Good, good to see you. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Happy to have you here. Let's go take a look. All right. So it's been a long time coming. It has been. And now yeah. you're finally close enough that I can actually be here, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. so it's cool. working out great. It's cool to see the shop. Thank you. You've just moved into it though, right? Yeah, we moved in May. Moved in yeah. May. May just moved all the machines May 1st and then started setting up. Spent about four to six weeks actually getting everything up and running again and uh, been back to production and Brought some new people in, hired some awesome people, and just cranking out product. Basically, everything starts right here, right? CAD, sitting in front of the computer. This is Ben, does a lot of our design work. He actually went on the uh, Alucab V3, which is, this is basically a picture of what's going in your truck later on today. Okay, so next process is to actually get stuff cut. So we go from design, uh, especially for like a plate system or a seat delete, we'll design it and we'll take that design, we'll send it to the machine, we'll do the cutting. After the cutting is done, then we'll take it, run it out to the vehicle, test fit it, make little tweaks, go back in, make some design revisions, send the machine, cut it again. Once we get it finalized, create all the drawings for the shop and then put it in production and start building it. So it's basically a CNC machine. It's all electronically computer controlled, of course. Uh, it talks to all of our CAD software. We take all that information, throw it in here, it cuts all the product out and then kicks it out over here. So it does all cutting here, pushes the parts off. And then these are actually parts for customers. So these are orders uh, for people that have product that have placed their orders online, either through dealer, through us direct. And then we just put them in production. They do sanding, assembly buildup, and then they go through into the spray booth and get sprayed and coated. So we actually do all of our own design, our cutting, coating process is done in-house. You can hear the machine running. Right now we're actually coating some stuff. So let's go take a, take a quick peek in through the window and see if we can see anything cool. So you can't walk in there, but you can kind of just peek in real quick and see he's actually coating right now. So we do all of our coating in-house. Once it's done being coated, it goes to the drying rack and then it sets off onto uh, some tables and gets final assembly and it gets ready to ship out. That's basically the plate production module production is a little bit different, but let's go take a look at that. Okay, so here's, these are all plates. These are customer orders. So these have gone through the entire cutting process, sanding, prep, buildup, 
uh, coating and then drying and then they sit here. Once they get to this stage, they're basically set on carts. They're allowed to cure for a couple days. And then Kyle over here goes ahead and takes all those pieces, all the different components, hardware, brackets, everything, combines them all in, bundles them, gets them ready for the shipping crew. Shipping crew box everything up and ships it out to the customer. So modules are all built over here. Um, we have our uh, cold saws for all of our aluminum, automatic, semi-automatic saws to get everything done nice and accurate. Super critical, obviously, that everything's consistent. Um, so this is actually a double drawer module. This is actually going in my Ineos. Uh, so this will have a camp kitchen and a double drawer module. We're gonna create our ultimate chef package and shoot the photos of that and get that product launched. It's a really popular system for the Jeeps and figure the Ineos will probably be really good for us also. So basically all of our modules are built in-house. Uh, drawer boxes, we just started machining our drawer boxes in-house also. So almost everything is built in-house. Extrusions cut here, the panels are cut here. Um, it gives us a lot of flexibility. We've got some new stuff coming out here in the next couple months for internal storage for drawers, which is gonna be pretty rad um, now that we've got that in control, which is awesome. Uh, and then of course, you know, just typical construction we always do. Metal latches, super heavy duty drawer guides. Uh, aluminum frame and then composite panels so super lightweight for what it is but it just gives you the strength and reliability. Whew, it is hot in Grand Junction but we got the truck in the shop and we're gonna start installing this V3 system with Peace Gear. Okay so let's get we're probably gonna thing. need to lift the battery up too. Do you want me to unplug that now and take it out? Might be easier okay. if that's okay. Yeah. Slide it on in and roll it into position. This is the plate that's gonna to be towards the door, right? Yes. Because the goose gear, yep. goose gear towards the, the door. Okay. So the yeah. reason you went to two, two piece? piece? Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, when we made the full size plate, the shipping. Uh -huh. So it, because it's so large, the shipping gets real expensive. A lot of times it has to go truck freight, which is really inconvenient for the consumer, right? Because yeah. they have to actually schedule the delivery and all that stuff with trucking companies. Um, also, the uh, shipping cost is astronomical. Yes. And then this actually allows you to, like we just did, we actually put it in with the camper already installed. Yeah. So before you had to put the plate in before the camper yeah. because it wouldn't fit through the door. Yeah. And so that's a big problem. Yeah, it's a big problem. You don't want to take your camper off once it's on. So this way you can add this real yeah. easily without having to take your camper off. So I'm excited because the bed bolts are actually exposed here because that'll allow me to kind of check those as we're driving this truck pretty rough on our guided trips and here in Colorado, it's always important to check those bed bolts so that you don't prematurely wear the bottom of your bed. Yep. We're gonna drill these back here and then they're actually mostly accessible from the wheel wells. Uh -huh. And then these ones are accessible from under the bed. Those are accessible from the wheel wells. So we'll skip okay, that one perfect. because the fuel tank is there. Yeah. And so it's very difficult to install that one. So it we is. don't even do it. We just get everything. Because once it's secured with these other bolts, it's more than strong enough on the Tacomas. Uh -huh. um, but it is a fairly universal uh -huh. system. A good rule of thumb when you're setting um, steel bolts into these kind of softer zinc uh, nut certs, you want to kind of go in reverse first until you feel it lay down and catch a thread and then turn it because the worst thing that can happen here is you could cross the thread and then it'd be game over. So before we drill, we're gonna take a look underneath this truck because Jason has done like 700 different builds on this truck, mm -hmm. maybe 712. And we're gonna take a look and make sure there's nothing underneath the truck because the last thing we wanna do is drill through here and he's got some kind of wire or, or fuel thing or who knows. So just take a look real quick, make sure we're not gonna drill through anything that's gonna blow up your truck. Oh man. It's yeah, nice. look at that. It doesn't yeah. look nice. Somebody, does I don't take nice. care of the back of the truck, but this just, is really dirty. Is this dirty? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is clean. <laughs> that's, so, that's so California. All oh, right. dang. Dude, I'm in Colorado, man. <laughs> slow. Real slow. Because it's composite, we don't want it well, to Well, yeah, yeah, usually a lot of people when they drill, especially like steel or something like that, they run it real super fast and yeah. like this. And all you're going to do is it's just going to blow out because it's mm -hmm. going to grip and that's a big drill bit. And so it's just going to tear the composite. So going slow allows it to do the cutting mm -hmm. rather than just cutting, pushing through. Next, we're going to drop a couple bolts in just to keep this in place. Okay. And then we're going to actually set the panels in. Uh, we're gonna put the anchors that go into the, ext the extrusion that's built into the alloy cab. Uh -huh. um, and this is one of the things that really makes alloy cab awesome for us and why we do so many systems for it. And we're on V3 yeah. because they're extremely consistent, right? So this frame has been the same on every camper they built, right? So for us as an interior builder, a lot of camper companies build to the truck 
they build a unique system where it's just four sizes, so it allows us to get really creative and make some really cool stuff that we can't do with other camper manufacturers. And that's why we're in a third, third re, uh, revision uh -huh. for Alucab, because it's just so easy to work with our system. So we have five Yep, dead or bolts. that'll be good to hold it in place just while okay. we're working on it. Okay. Um, let me find out where my brackets are. Okay. So these guys are gonna go in the Alucab track. Yep. So we're actually gonna put two anchors in here. Uh -huh. and we're gonna bolt these in place. And this has a captured PEM nut right there that's threaded. So when we put the top plates on, it just bolts in and clamps down. Uh -huh. So we're gonna put one, two back here for this module and then two or three in the front. I believe it's three in the front for okay. the uh, five foot Tacoma utility. So. so this is the top plate for the rear utility and it's gonna rest right on top of this ledge. This is gonna line up right here about with the, uh, the latch strike. Oh, the so door. that's what the cutout that's for the latch That's what the cutout is, is for. Yeah. And then these are the holes that we're gonna go into to hold this to it. And then our panel will go vertically right here. These, as far as hardware goes for these, right? We've got the bracket and then we've got um, actually Four. just Yep, four two. Roll, two per, four, two roll in T-nuts per. Yeah, yep. and then two of these um, lock washers. Yep. And then two of your button head allens. Yep, and it's gonna be the half inch length, so these are a little bit long. It's gonna be these guys, a little bit shorter ones. It doesn't matter which way, Brian, right? Usually I put the, uh, the rubber handle, put it facing on the outside, because then it doesn't interfere with the bracket when you try and bolt it on. Good tip. You had another little tip from Goose gear so today. Many. So <laughs> many. You are full of tips. <laughs> <laughs> we are adjusting the feet, the mounting feet, for the modules the and getting them squared. I'm going to smack you in the face real That's quick. Okay, as long as we're on the same page. Um, and then we're just basically getting these lined up so that when we go to put the bolts in, everything fits the way it's supposed to. These, these are actually designed to have a gap between them. So they have about an eighth of an inch gap is the way we design it. When this is sprayed and coated in house, it is done by, you know, by hand with a human, right? So it's not a robot and it's just, they spray it. And when he sprays it, if he doesn't get this nice even texture, he has to shoot it again to get that texture just right. Every time he shoots it, it gets a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. So we leave a gap there so that if they have to shoot it an extra time to get the texture just right, we have that tolerance so everything will still fit together. So having this gap here is actually part of the design. Okay, so what we're doing is we're getting everything in place and then we're anchoring these brackets down. Um, then we're gonna take the top plates off and then put the side panels up, right? Correct. Jerry's here too Who's from Timber Tusk, right? I'm supervising. Yes, he's, supervising. he's doing a great job. He's just sitting um, in the chair, doing a great job. Brian's gonna tell us about these face plates. Yes. So basically we have a mounting base that gets bolted into the, the base plate that's already been installed in the truck. So these get bolted to the floor using these little slotted anchors. That way you can adjust it because depending on where your camper is on your truck, all that kind of stuff. Once these are in, then these panels will slip over the front. And then you have a series of holes there you can see up and down. So this is what gives you the adjustability for the different vehicles. So if you have a Gladiator or a Tacoma or Chevy Colorado, they're all different height trucks. And then also like the Colorado and the Ford Ranger are also uh, angled. So this allows you to angle this piece to flatten it out so that when you create your bench inside your truck, it'll be perfectly level to the ground even if your bed is slanted. And there's slots so you can adjust this. So really you need to catch, you wanna catch at least two holes. There's four holes total possible, but you wanna catch at least two. And it already feels like there's a bunch of space in here. I mean, cause I had the drawers in before. So it took away from some of the space. The drawers were nice because, you know, you could just put stuff in there that didn't have to be in a bag. You could just have loose ends and things like that. Are you thinking about doing drawers at some point? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. We've already started working on a design for the drawers. The difficulty with the drawers is right now they're built to every vehicle. So we have like 26 different sizes because uh -huh. of the different heights between all the vehicles. And that's very difficult for the consumer to figure out which one they need, the dealers, all that stuff. So and for inventory. So now we're making a universal one. So it'll have a top drawer that'll be a deeper drawer. And then the bottom will just be open storage. So it'll be just like a U-shape. Like a, so a cubby. So you could slide bags in there. And like in the Tacoma, the goal is that we could take like a step 22 bag and just slide it right in there, right? Uh -huh. To make it that height, to give it like an eight inch clearance. Or put some dirty shoes or your smelly sandals. It'd be a great place to put your smelly sandals. Yeah, okay. yeah, they are smelly. You were our very first customer for our Scottle back in 2015. And you're now our very first customer for an aluminum slide. Being aluminum, it's considerably lighter. Yes, it's very light, actually. Okay. Oh, gosh. Dang, look at that. Ooh. Okay. It's going to fit. 
that's well, going to fit. The idea and the concept behind using this slide um, was to give us the ability that when we would get to camp, we can slide this ARB Elements fridge toward the door so that then we can access the fridge and everything that's inside of it and also use the cutting board. Well, for number one, it's a side pull, which is different. Every other manufacturer does a front pull, which is the long way the fridge sits. You turn it sideways, you now have a side pull. It's, uh, you know, different vehicles have different issues. Like in vans, you would put this under the couch and it pulls out, you got your fridge, which works perfect. Okay. Um, and then, of course, the change is from steel to aluminum. Uh, we found that the aluminum is just as strong as the steel and considerably lighter. Uh, and uh, the slide will also, if you want the fridge to be at the low end, you can also pick it up and have uh, an inch and a half below it. Yeah, I think that's what we're probably going to do, You might need to raise it. Yeah, I think we're going to have to lift this up because with the ARB Element fridge, the latches are on the side. So it's really nice because it's going to open this way, but it's hydraulic sprung, so it'll stay in place. Um, but we need to try to get the, the, the lip of the fridge up to or just above the edge of this goose gear somehow. I think it's going to work out mm -hmm. so that I can reach in there and undo those and clips. And release it. And then, like you said, we could put stuff underneath it there. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, this is set up for a cutting board. If you needed to put a cutting board, you've got one, so you don't need it. Yeah. But uh, for other people, it is set up for So are we going to put the goose gear um, tie downs on there? Are we going to put the Timbo Test tie downs on there? <laughs> We're going to put the tumble <laughs> All right, let's get this thing out of the way. I think uh, unless work. Brian has, uh, has uh, managed to lose them in the mail. I'm not seeing them anywhere. Yeah. If this works, it's going to be kind of cool. Yeah? Yeah, I think it is going to work. Yeah, especially considering we can actually raise that up. Brian's put this nice molly panel on here, too. So we're trying to make sure that everything is going to size up and clear. And guys, I'm looking like I have probably a finger's width about, uh, I don't know, just under a half inch or just over a half inch off of this molly panel right now. Yep. I mean, having the team here to help with the cameras, um, to be with these two guys that we've known for so long, um, is just a lot of fun. Um, so we're gonna take the bottom face plates out and we're gonna take just this back base plate out. The front. Yeah, the front of the base plate out. Yep. And we're gonna put nut certs in there for the Timbatus slide. That's it. There it is. That's pretty good. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. You good? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Tea nuts? Yes, not nuts or it's nuts or it's the things that we put on the metal. Yeah. There's also oh, things called these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> we are close. We are close. <laughs> we are close. <laughs> that was very close, actually. <laughs> All right, so Paul had a great idea. Let's just put the battery in first before trying to sneak it through here. This cabinet is has a very large door, so you can put a typical 100 amp hour uh, size battery in there. Um, so the battery's in place. Actually, I need to plug it in. Those are those are tight already. Just the back, just the back one on both sides. Camera's ready. All right, Jerry, let's put this thing in. All righty. Just gonna watch, watch the edges here. Yeah, let's try not to hit anything. I go. really like how this has space underneath of it to, you know, slide some miscellaneous things, right? If there's just a bed bolt there. Open up the slide, locate your holes. Okay. And, uh, and what are we using? Uh, quarter 20? It uh, looks like they're quarter 20s for this. Jerry, the moment of truth here is one. All right, there's one. We'll get started with that one. Uh, we start from the back and move forward. So there is, uh, just to give you guys an idea of how close everything is here, Jerry's got about a quarter inch on either side tolerance. Um, so a total of a half inch clearance put together to get this slide into place. Um, the fridge from ARB is like 32 and a half inches, like 32.7. Um, so there's a lot of room, but what we're trying to do is get that fridge elevated high enough so that 
Um, the buckles that are on the side of it, you can actually access and reach them and clip them on and off. If we still need a little bit more clearance, I've got that rubber stall mat from Tractor Supply, and we're gonna cut that to fit in the rectangle um, top of this uh, timber test fridge slide. Fridge slide's tightened down. Ready for action. So it's gonna have to go. This is gonna be tricky. <laughs> All right, so new plan. <laughs> That's probably why it's on is, uh, fridge right. is going no, in. We're typically about 60 pounds from the side. How do you feel about this, lifting this up to there? Do you want another set of hands on it? No shame in asking. No, it's all right. Okay, ready? Ben, you might want to come in here and grab this in. Okay, I'm coming up. All right, lift with your back in a twisting, wrenching motion. Yeah, that won't be bad for you at all. Perfect. Oh, there's room there, Ben, huh? Is there room there, Ben? There's, you want a beer? I do. Oh, there you <laughs> Is there beer in there? Oh, this explains why it was so heavy. Unscrew this. And what we're gonna do is see those little punches that are all over the place? Those are designed so that you can punch them out and put right, outlets yep. in. Oh, cool. Hold on, yeah. push it. I don't wanna be the first person to slide <laughs> the bridge. Beautiful. Oh gosh. Yeah, but <laughs> to go. be able to be there and cook and pull that out and get yeah. to it easy. You're gonna need a wire, a wire rick up. What? That's it, done. Well, we did it. Here's the new mod cap. Yeah, I've camped up here in West Virginia with a couple of my close friends, and we have a view that you cannot believe up here right now. So we've spent some time, obviously, in the mod cap. It's fall now, and we're trying to wrap this build up here for you guys a little bit. The last step in this process is to show you what we've done with the camper. So here it is. I've got it all set up as we're kind of enjoying camp. Um, there's no facilities up here, so I've got the shower cube with the wrap on toilet inside of it. It works really nice to have this set up no matter what time of day it is. Uh, we'll show you a little bit of what it looks like inside. Yeah, so let's show you the shower cube. This thing has been really handy for us. Uh, first step in the walk around here. Uh, what's really clutch about the shower cube is that you have this shelf up here um, where I'm keeping the coagulant, the bags, hand sanitizer, toilet paper. Um, and here's the wrap on PF1. Um, you've got access here with this zipper to get in the truck if you need to. Um, and then you got this optional roof. Uh, maybe provide you some shade or some shelter from the wind. One of the distinct differences between the canopy camper that we did have in this mod cap um, is the design, right? Um, no more tread pattern here on the sides of the canopy, on top of the canopy or anything like that. Um, and we've also got these stock windows, which really give uh, the camper a nice look um, and allow you some um, daylight, right? Because these things are naturally very dark inside. Um, and it's actually a really good level. Having these windows at this level is really good too, because it's just below waist height. So if you're changing or something like that, you don't gotta worry about people seeing anything. On top, we have this track as well, which makes it really nice for accessories. We've got a Red Arc solar panel up top. So the panel up top ties into the Red Arc TVMS system and the GP Factor power board in the camper. Very essential item up top here that came from our Kaya and from our Canopy camper now is on uh, this mod cap is the shadow awning from Audi Cab. What else has changed here are the buckles, right? So the buckles are a little bit different. They're a little beefier now. Um, and then up here on the tent fabric, it's a zip up. So we had the first generation of the Canopy Camper and it did not have the zip up vestibule. This comes with the zip up vestibule and you could get that on the second generation and on for the Canopy Camper, but it's a standard feature of the mod cap. Over here on the corner, uh, passenger corner, we have the GP Factor fireplace stack, which goes with um, the Dickinson. We can talk about that in a minute. We do have the GP Factor shovel um, and I'm using a Trail Racks tool mount here, which is very nice. I wasn't sure how I was actually gonna mount it here, but the bolt and the hardware that I had from my Rhino Rack shovel holder did work and fit through there. So I was able to mount it here on the side of the truck. Very sturdy mount and uh, you can actually lock it as well. Really happy with the tire on the back. This is a 34 inch tire. So it's a 285, 75, 17. Um, I didn't have a tire on the back of the canopy camper. I just had my Max Trax. Mm -hmm. And right now I have a tire and I do have the Max Trax holder on the back. The Max Trax are leveling me out right now. So I'm not using them for a recovery situation. Um, but we do have 
uh, tire trash bag from Blue Ridge Overland Gear. This is the small one. This isn't the XL. And it's the perfect size for what we need to do. All right, here on the back before we jump in, obviously got to have the King Crusher. This guy's been getting a lot of use. <laughs> this is the GP Factor propane tank mount. It's been working really well, and it's really easy to actually pull out your propane tank, right? So it just tilts forward just like that. I've got the propane tied into a quick release system here, so I don't have to leave the hose on all the time. Um, I've got NOCO shore power here on the back as well. And then we've got our gravity feed faucet on the back. What a view, right? What a view. But let's take you inside the camper and show you what it looks like. All right, on the door, we've opened the door here, right? We do have the GP Factor um, drop down table right here with a bamboo cutting board. Such a crucial piece of equipment here for prep anything that you need to do on the back. Paper towel roll holder here from Expedition Essentials. Um, had that on the Canopy Camper, sold it with the Canopy Camper, was a must have. We use that all the time. Deemer box here, I've actually turned the music off. We've been listening to music all day. Um, with an outer limit supply, quick release. And to mount that back up there, you just simply Take the box, it clicks into place, right? And it's not going anywhere. Two Blue Ridge Overland Gear bags here, one piggybacked, right? So inside this one um, is where I keep my propane line. Easy access to propane. And inside this one is my spices. I like my spices. All of this equipment on the rear door is anchored to two GP Factor Molly panels. So first off, you're gonna notice this is the new Goose Gear um, camper system, right? So this is a prototype. Things are going to change a little bit. We've got these knockouts for power to install power outlets, right? Here's a USB charger on this side. These cutouts act as Molly um, attachment points. On either side, we have pass-through storage uh, to the front of the truck, right? This is where all my power is coming in. And here's where I manage all my connections to the GP Factor power board. One thing that's really unique about this new Goose Gear system it is it is universal, meaning that if any of the midsize vehicles that they do support, this system will fit in each of them. Um, there's cutouts here for hole patterns that you can use to adapt to, like I said, most of the midsize vehicles that are supported by Goose Gear. And this whole thing will ship in a flat pack, right? So they'll individually wrap each of these items and it all bolts together. I feel like this is one of the coolest features that I added to the mod cap. I had this idea of having a fridge up against the bulkhead, but instead of me climbing into the camper all of the time, I could just reach in and pull that fridge to me. So I'd have a prep station here for cooking, uh, grabbing a quick drink or even restocking the fridge at a stop, right? So what we've done here is added a Timbo Tusk Extreme Duty aluminum side pull slide. And it comes out just like this. Yeah, it really works out nice having this fridge here close to the door. So I've got really easy access uh, to my table and I can grab and cook and do whatever I need. All right, so you can get a better look here of the Molly um, access here on either side. There's some cutouts here that um, they have some future plans for. And we have some punch outs here for power too. I'm probably gonna mount another outlet right here. Another Molly plate on the back. And this bulkhead storage gives me access to my battery. On the back wall here, we've got the 13 gallon water tank from Alucab. Um, it works as a great level when you're coming up to camp. If the water's level across, you know your camper's level too. And here hanging on the wall is a Blue Ridge Overland Gear wrap-on storage bag. That's what the wrap-on packs down into and I hang it right here from the water tank. At the entry of the camper and up here on the storage shelf, I've actually added some stall matting from Tractor Supply to give it a nice finish um, and make it grippy so that if you stored stuff up top, it's not gonna slide around. Of course, I've kept my patch collection, just sharing stories and people's experiences and meeting people along the way. That's why we collect these patches, it's a lot of fun. So I've actually stepped over the fridge now at this point so I can show you kind of what's here towards um, the back of the camper, right? So we do have uh, the Dickinson heater. We had the Dickinson heater in the canopy camper and loved it. We've got it set up so that we can blow the fan too. On this side is the Red Arc TVMS Red Vision system um, and a GP Factor power board, right? We've got USB-C, USB-A and 12 volt power right here. Very important feature that we did bring over to the mod cap was these Sirocco fans. Uh, they work so good. I've actually added one on both sides. 
One of the unique features of the mod cap is also this channel right here. This channel is not nearly as deep or wide as it was in the canopy camper, which makes it really nice so when you're setting on your shelves, you're not hitting your shoulder and your head up against the side. And again, these fans are super uh, total flexibility to position them however you want to, uh, to keep the people up top cool or down low just as cool. Again, from the canopy camper to the mod cap, you do get your reading light. Um, and then back here, it's going to be hard to see right now, but we do have USB charge ports as well. Another feature that has changed a little bit, at least for my version of canopy camper, is this platform that folds up here is a little bit smaller uh, lengthwise. I felt like I had another six or eight inches on top of this with mine. So what you do get is you get more sleeping platform up top. I normally sleep with this up in case we're going to have a dog with us or something. I'll drop this down and then they got a place to sleep. All right, let's put the fridge back in place and show you the rest of the camper. This is my Dutch oven. As you, you guys know who I am, you know I like to cook in a Dutch oven. But on the top of the goose gear system here, we do have two hatches, right? One for the front, uh, one for the back closest to the door. Over on this side, I've actually added a 12 volt SureFlow pump um, strategically placed on this side to give me access to the privacy tent or the shower cube here from Value Cab on the side of the truck. Again, similar size storage over on this side as well. I have a three gang outlet with USB that's tied into my 400 watt Red Arc power inverter. And that's coming pretty handy with some fun things like this. So this is definitely not a plug for the piece of equipment, but I found it to be one of the coolest pieces that I've gotten here lately. Uh, we just tested it out yesterday. It's the size of my palm and it's a pancake maker. You can also make uh, cookies with it. You can make biscuits with it. You can do just about anything with this little guy. It makes the perfect size um, and it's 350 watt draw. So my 400 watt inverter powers this pancake maker. Up top again, sleeping platform. Uh, what's unique about this space here in the mod cap is I've actually installed a drop down table. Uh, the drop down table is an excellent add on to give you space to set up an iPad to watch with your family, set up a computer, maybe do a little bit of work. Um, have the option of actually putting the backrest in here too, but honestly, most of my work is being done outside. It's been a lot of fun for family time uh, when we're at camp or when it's inclement um, to be able to set an iPad up here and watch a couple movies with the family. You know, we've taken this camper since we put it in uh, to Colorado. We did a couple more guided trips. Um, I spent a week working out of this camper on our way out west. We use this interior space as a desk, right? You know, to put my laptop on, I would actually take this pad, set it down on the fridge, and then I'd be at just about the perfect level to be able to type on my laptop. Um, you could stand up here if you had a little bit shallower fridge as well. But mostly, I'd end up at camp with the drop-down table and my laptop set up here, and I'd have views like this. So there's the walk around of our mod cap camper. Thanks for watching. It's been a lot of fun and a lot of work putting this together, but it's an excellent product. I can't say more about Audi Cab. Thank you, OK Four Wheel Drive, for letting us come up and install this with you guys. And until the next time, make sure you like, subscribe, and smash that bell for notifications. If you got any questions about anything about this camper or our build, just leave it in the comments below. Hey, you can